projects you've always wanted to get to. Law Firm Growth During COVID-19, Episode 84. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Profit with Law. I am your host, Moshe Amsel, and today is another replay for you of the live stream series that we've been doing in dealing with COVID-19. If you attended this live, you can listen again. See if you, you know, when when you watch, uh, when I noticed, and, and, and you, I'm sure you noticed this too, is when you watch a movie for a second time or a third time or a fourth time, you always catch a line that you missed the first time or you, you you see something new, you hear something new. Same thing when you're reading a book. If you read a book a second time, usually you're picking up on something that you missed the first time around. So up to you if you want to listen to this episode, but if you listen to it, I'm sure that you're going to glean something new that you missed the first time around. Folks, if you've been listening to this show for a while, I'd love it if you would uh, hit that button to write a review and rate the show. Uh, We can really use some ratings and reviews, and it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I will give you a shout out here on the show, so just put it in there, and uh, we'll read the review out loud for everybody here to hear it. Uh, For those of you who have been following along, I, together with Mark Homer from GNGF and uh, Melanie Leonard from Streamline Legal, have launched a membership that is geared to um, the uh, really small solo and small law firm. Zero to 250K in revenue is the target we're aiming for. Uh, And what we are trying to do is help you with wearing the many hats that you are uh, forced to wear in the early stages of your business. So you need help with marketing. You need help with tech. You need help with systems and processes. You need help with your finances. You need help with just understanding your business and under and making sure that you're taking the right steps to move forward. So if it feels like you're overwhelmed, if it feels like you're stuck, if it feels like um, you just you need help with making that progress and moving forward, then you definitely want to uh, give us a shot. It's a brand new brand new product, a brand new offer, and it's going to be $150 a month. But up until Monday, let me just look at the date real quick so that because people are going to be listening to this years from now and they'll be like, oh, Monday. Up until April 6th, 2020. So not not including Monday, on Sunday night at midnight or sometime before Monday morning. I don't, don't know if I'll be doing it exactly at midnight. The price for this membership is going to be going up. So we're offering it right now $27 a month. It's going to be jumping up to $57 a month after midnight on Sunday the 5th. Do not wait. We're also capping it at 30 seats. So we have 23 people in there at the time of this recording. You have seven more people who will join and the price will go up to $57 a month. So we decided to open it up to the first 30 people, our early adopters, to give it at $27 a month. Then we're going to jump to $57 for our next 20 and then we're going to jump to $97 for our next uh, 50 And when we get to 100 people in there, we're going to be going to $1. 47 a month. So, um, and uh, we we have a whole course that we're building out that's going to be in there. Uh, for right now, when you join at this reduced rate, uh, you'll get immediate access to us with weekly calls. So uh, coming up in April, we have a marketing call, we have a technology call, and we have a, a, um, a financials call and then a Q&A where all three of us We'll be there to answer your questions. So I'm really excited about this opportunity, and I hope that you uh, that you take it because uh, it could be exactly what you need. That little extra tool uh, as a support system in your business to help propel and guide you forward. You can get that with going to profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator. Profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator and sign up there. Now, if you're sitting there saying, 
huh, zero to 250K, that's not me. I am beyond that. This is probably not for me. You're probably right. Um, but if you still feel like you need help, you need direction, you need some clarity, figuring out how to get out of your own way and move forward, I do offer free coaching calls uh, where I can help you with getting that clarity. And if you want that, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, and uh, book a session with me and let's, let's dive deep. It's a 90 minute call. And we can really get a lot in 90 minutes, a lot done in 90 minutes. So looking forward to seeing you on that call. This session is all about productivity and uh, projects that you have always wanted to get to. And uh, we had some great discussions around prioritization and figuring out where to focus your efforts. But ultimately, the conversation ended up taking a turn and talking about marketing again. And we got uh, ended up uh, going deep into certain types of, of strategies that you can use to bring in new clients. So once again, it was an enjoyable discussion and I'm really excited to just share this with you today and allow you to uh, enjoy it and appreciate it yourself. So I hope you enjoy it and let's, uh, let's cut over to that replay now. We have been on a... Um, a marathon of live streams. So this is the eight, the ninth live stream that we're doing to support you with the COVID-19 pandemic social distancing situation and what it's doing to you and your firm, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, or just needing to pivot and change and, and, um, and do things differently. Uh, so today, our, um, our topic is projects you always wanted to get to. And the reason that I chose this topic as something that we should talk about is because two things might be happening. Either you are finding yourself to, to not be busy right now. And maybe there are things that you've always need, known you needed to do to move your law firm forward and progress in a positive direction that it's a good time and opportunity to sit down and actually do that. Like just hone in and become, you know, take some time to work on your business. We all have heard, heard people say, Oh, we're on your business, not in your business. Now might be a great opportunity for that. Others of you might be finding that with having kids at home and with trying to run a, a business from home, and maybe you have an increase in business during this time that you, you have even less time, and you're trying to navigate, how do I stay on track with projects that I'm, already, that I'm already trying to get started and now it seems to be even more difficult. Do I just put them aside or do I continue to move forward? So that was why I, I chose this topic um, and I brought these amazing panelists on and I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, but before I do that, I want to share uh, these live streams, would it be possible without um, Sponsors, uh, it it costs it costs money on the back end. First of all, we're paying for per advertising, so this has been going out on Facebook uh, in Facebook ads. Uh, so we're actually spending dollars to get in front of you to make sure that you have this information. But also the overhead behind the scenes of putting together all of the graphics and the emails and the promotions around it, um, it costs money and it wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. So we really owe it to our sponsors to recognize that they are the ones bringing this information to you. I am just the messenger. They're actually the ones that are making this happen. So they all have something free for you to check out. Just go check it out. Give them, just give them that as your tip, you know, to, uh, for this event. Um, and if it's not for you, if it's not something that you're interested in, then you move on. It's not a big deal. GNGF, Mark Homer, they're offering this book for free. They'll ship it to you. No cost, no shipping cost, nothing. Online law practice strategies, how to turn clicks into clients by Mark Homer and whoever he wrote it with. I don't know how to pronounce the name, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but this is like the go-to Bible for just getting started online and really understanding how to create your marketing strategy online. You folks, you got to read this book if you want to be relevant online. So go to gngf.com forward slash free dash book, gngf.com forward slash free dash book and put in your info. They'll mail it out to you. I tried it out. I'm holding this book only because 
I put it in on day one and I already have it to show you. So um, I think he already sent me a book, but I couldn't find it. So I put in for another free one. Um, Alley Katz, New Law Business Model. New Law Business Model helps attorneys um, either add estate planning to their practice or if they are in estate planning practice to really make that practice profitable by teaching them how to get three to $5,000 per estate plan. They also uh, help you add on to that working with business owner clients and getting to $750 to $3,000 a month in recurring revenue per client. If these numbers sound like something that could be really helpful for you and your firm, then you definitely need to check out New Law Business Model. And the best way to do that is, of course, to do something for free, to do it now by just taking the action, and that's join their Facebook group, Facebook group, Lifestyle Lawyers Club. Their Facebook group, Lifestyle Lawyers Club, is where you'll get a ton of resources, information, and, uh, and guidance on getting started on this journey. And then if it makes sense to take the next step with them, great. But if not, you at least are in a community of like-minded uh, entrepreneurial attorneys who are interested in the same thing. Uh, when you do join there, let them know you came through the Law Firm Growth Summit Live COVID series, and they will send you a free video and guide on how to serve virtually. Also, we are sponsored by Smith AI. Smith AI has been a supporter of everything that we're doing from day one. They also support a lot of other initiatives in the legal marketplace. Smith AI is your go-to virtual reception service. There is no better time than the present to add that front line of defense to your firm. Even if you have a front desk person, even if you have somebody answering your phone, they could be tied up on the phone when the phone rings. Now they can't answer it. They could be out to the bathroom. They could be home navigating working from home with the kids and maybe they're not answering the phone as quickly as as uh, um, precisely as they were before or maybe they're not answering the phone when they're not in the office so there's a ton of overflows a ton of reasons to think about adding this and also what if your front desk person can actually be doing other things in your firm instead of answering the phone and you can have smith ai do it all for you now they're more than just a virtual reception service they'll do outbound dialing for you they won't do cold calling but they will do outbound dialing to follow up on leads to call leads that might have fallen off the map and you want to resurrect them now um, they'll do that for you uh, they'll also enter stuff into your CRM they will install and manage and monitor a web chat um, an AI chatbot on your on your website so you can install one of those things where somebody can message your firm right from the site and then they will answer that message for you and um, pick it up on the phone if that's where the, the person wants to go, uh, but they'll handle that whole piece for you. You don't have to sit there monitoring it. So um, Smith AI is a great service. Uh, what they are offering today is if you go to their website, which is smith.ai, and sign up and use the code SMITHCOVID19, they're going to give you an extra $290 worth of free stuff. That includes the first month of the starter plan free with an extra 20 calls. So you already get 20 free calls when you sign up. That'll give you a total of 40. And then they will also do an AI chatbot setup and installation for you, which normally they charge $150 for, and they will set that up for you on your website included as a part of this. So definitely um, you want to check them out. And then last but not least, here at Profit With Law, first of all, if you're not listening to the podcast, check out the Profit With Law podcast. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Ton of great stuff going there, including the replays of all of these live streams are, are posted there. So if you can't dedicate an hour plus to sitting in front of the screen on video, you can plug in your earbuds while you're on the treadmill, while you're cooking in the kitchen, or even what I do with a waterproof Bluetooth speaker in the shower. Um, you can be listening to this content uh, while we are doing that with um, uh, with the podcast. So we would love to have you as a, as a subscriber there. We also introduced a brand new uh, membership called the Law Firm Growth Incubator. It's specifically designed to for those small firms who are just at the early stages, your zero to 250K in revenue, maybe as much as 500K in revenue, you, you're still wearing all the hats. You need support in the various areas. So I, I collaborated with Mark Homer from GNGF to give you all the marketing knowledge you need. I collaborated with Melanie Leonard from Streamline Legal to bring all the processes and tech that you need. And then you have myself with the financials, the staff management, and anything else that you need with running your firm. And the three of us together have 
have come together to create this for you where every single week you get a call. One week it's marketing, one week it's tech, one week it's, uh, it's running your practice, and then one week it's either going to be a guest um, that we bring in or a Q&A uh, with either one or all of us. So uh, really excited about this. And the beautiful thing about it is we, we wanted to make sure that we made it really, really reasonable for you folks right now during the COVID pandemic issue. Uh, so during this live stream uh, that we're doing, it's $27 a month to join. This is going to be $150 a month product. It is only $27 a month to join. Uh, your time is running out. The last live stream is on Friday. And then after that, we're going to go through the weekend. And then on Monday, we raise the price to $57 a month. So uh, we're going to step up to the 150. I'm not telling you we're going to 150 on Monday. Uh, but if you want to lock in $27 a month for this, you want to do it now because uh, it's going up on Monday. And it's profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator, profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator. And all of these links have been posted for you in the chat uh, by Mimi. Thank you, Mimi. Um, also, folks, if you have questions for our panelists, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, whether you're on mobile, whether you're on desktop, Go to the bottom of the Zoom screen, uh, and there is a Q&A button. That is the appropriate place to ask questions. The chat is for conversing back and forth with each other, with the panelists. The Q&A is where you pose questions for us. And when you pose a question, please let us know if you want to come on live. If you want to come on live, we'll promote you to a panelist. We'll bring you on. We'll allow you to turn on your camera or just your audio, whatever you're comfortable with. And you can actually go interact with us two ways. So we can ask you questions, we can get feedback, and it'll be a better way to ask your question if you're willing to do that. So I'm going to quickly just run through our panelists, allow them to introduce themselves. For those of you who have been here every day, some of this might be repetitious because we have Molly and Andy who, <coughs> who have been here the entire time, um, but I'm, we're going to go through all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let you know who's up and who's next so that you panelists are ready, uh, and we'll run through real quick with an intro. So Molly, you're going to be first, and Kristen, you'll be next. Okay, good morning from Chile, Colorado. My name is Molly McGrath and I am the founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions and we have been serving uh, small solo law firms for 22 years now. Uh, we have a podcast, Hiring and Empowering Solutions, three-time Amazon bestseller, and we've been blogging in regards to everything on hiring, firing, training, onboarding, leadership, and everything in regards to your process, profit, and in a law firm since 2008, and um, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you, Moshe, for putting this together. It's been fantastic. Awesome, Molly. Um, I think we lost Kristen. We'll go back to her. Shauna, you're next. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Shauna with Tracers, and Tracers is a public record reset um, research platform where um, an attorney can go to locate a person of interest, a defendant, a witness, um, as well as to research businesses or to find assets. We offer criminal um, histories, um, vehicle um, identifications, um, pretty much a 360 view of um, the adult population, 99% um, of the adult population in the country. And um, we've been around for 24 years and um, we love working with attorneys. Awesome, Shauna, thank you. Andy, uh, uh, you're gonna be after Carol. Carol, you're up. Had to come off mute. Hi everyone, I am Carol Williams with the Williams, with Williams Immigration. I'm a boutique immigration law firm. I've been practicing for over 20 years now and spent some time within the immigration agency um, and love to talk all things tech with you all. So thank you for having me, Moshe. Uh, you're very welcome. And uh, Carol was one of the speakers at our Law Firm Growth Summit and very happy to have you here today. Andy, you're up. Kristen, you're next. Thanks for having me again. Uh, my name is Andy Stickle and I help lawyers get more clients. I own an agency called Social Firestarter and I oversee the marketing of like 70-ish uh, law firms marketing campaigns. And I also um, do coaching for lawyers. I've got almost 300 lawyers that I kind of teach how to uh, do marketing and how to, uh, uh, you know, have, have good marketing and systems that, that run automatically. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Kristen, you're up. Good morning. I'm Kristen Tyler. I am one of the co-founders of a company called Law Clerk. We are at lawclerk.legal. 
And what we do in a nutshell is we help match up busy attorneys who are trying to grow and scale their firms with our network of freelance lawyers that you can use to collaborate and leverage the time and talent of the freelancers to get more work done, bring more revenue into your firm, and um, look forward to talking with you about taking advantage of some of this time right now to try delegating if you haven't done so already. Awesome. And uh, Law Clerk was one of the sponsors of the Law Firm Growth Summit back in December. And I have uh, gotten great feedback from people who heard about it during the summit and have taken it for a test drive and are using the services there to be able to fill uh, some gaps in their firm that they haven't been able to do before. So love the work that Law Clerk is doing. And if you're thinking about trying to expand, trying to delegate and um, you're just not sure you're ready to bring on somebody full time, it's a perfect solution for you to just start to give pieces of what you're doing away. Um, and, and maybe you don't need to bring somebody on full time. Maybe that's a better solution for you. So uh, definitely excited to have Kristen here to talk to us about uh, with us about that today. Uh, so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just throw out a question to the panelists. We're going to follow the same pattern and go through each panelist. After that, we're going to open it up to Q&A from the audience, and uh, then it'll be just an open floor. Panelists can just unmute themselves and respond if they have something to add to the conversation. So folks, if you have a question, don't wait. Don't sit there thinking somebody else is going to ask it. Just pop it into the Q&A section. Um, it's been sometimes it's pulling teeth, getting questions out of you. Yesterday, uh, we really had a lot of questions coming in, and it made for a much more energetic and exciting broadcast. So uh, if you came here wondering something, uh, needing to, to solve a problem of some kind, you definitely have a question. So just take, the moment, uh, take a moment and pop it into the Q&A, and don't forget to let me know if you're willing to go live when we ask that question. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through our panelists, and I'm going to ask you... What is along the, the lines of the topic at hand, which is, you know, projects that, um, you know, that, that we want to get to, uh, what is your uh, number one tip that you'd like to share with the audience in relation to that? And uh, we're going to go Shauna first and then Carol. Yes. So my tip to everyone this morning is to use the project of building your referral network. This is a excellent time of getting the processes in place and it um, and it's it's free to do it just takes some time and structure and some thought and whether you're a solo attorney or a small firm or a technology company um, this is how you can really drive some growth and um, you know there's a great story about this is literally how Dropbox um, the company that we all utilize now this is how they built their business and, um, and it comes down to just like, it's, it's not rocket science. Um, it's a very plain and simple, and it's about relationship building with the current um, clients that you have. And so the, um, and, and Moshe, you have an excellent podcast um, that I had listened to, which um, I highly recommend everyone to kind of circle around and go visit because there was an expert um, and she has some wonderful advice about this, but I can go walk through just some simple things. And that is, um, you know, after you finish working on a case, you, um, you know, just a very simple thing to do is to, you know, reach out and, and circle around and show gratitude to your client, um, thanking them for their business. And, you know, what does that look like? You know, that can, that could be an email, but that's not very personal. So um, whether that be a call, that's okay. But um, even better is to write a hand note and, um, you know, showing your gratitude. And, but this is also, you're not just saying this is one and done. This is just, this is part of your process. So that's step one is showing your gratitude, writing a note. Um, and then, and you're, you're really, you know, planting this seed, um, you know, and this is, this is exactly also how Tracers um, has grown as a company. You know, for 20 years, we had never gone to a legal show or attended any bar association or called an attorney. Yet we had hundreds of attorneys on our platform. So it was like, okay, so why is that? And we grew strictly from referral, from one attorney saying, oh wait, do you have tracers? Or from an employee who went from one firm um, to another, it's like, wait, you need tracers. So that um, that is literally how you know our company has grown. And, um, and that is how I think it's an amazing way for um, an attorney. 
So then after, so when you're speaking to your clients, you're letting them know that referrals are important and that, you know, so that is, it's the, the plant, the seed um, that you would appreciate it, but you're not asking for it. And that's a big um, something to make note of is you're not asking someone, can you give me it? You're just saying that this is how you like to grow. It's organic if you've had a positive experience. Um, and then, and then it's, and then, you know, you'll probably only have a few people or maybe 30% of all of the client base that actually engages in this. Lots of times these are people that like to network. They like to connect dots. They like to make the introductions. So those are going to be um, your go-to people that really will help build this out. And so then once you've identified who they are, then it's a matter of, you know, keeping them engaged. And that can look like, you know, contacting them four times a year, you know, a holiday card or sending just a small lumpy mail gift, <laughs> or it can, um, just anything to be, you know, just to stay in contact in, you know, an actually authentic, meaningful way. Um, so that's my tip. Awesome, Sean. I love that. Carol, you're going to be up and uh, uh, Kristen, you'll be next. All right. So my tip is really um, to be very specific about what you are looking to do. Um, at this point, I know that many of us, most of us are working from home and that's a whole new world. And we've set up our home offices super fast and we've grabbed all of the notepads and sticky notes and whatnot. If you're like me, I'm a fan of the sticky note, whether they're electronic or paper on my desk. Um, and sometimes it's really easy, I think, to get very overwhelmed at all of the various projects that you want to get done. And so I've spoken with a ton of attorneys and a ton of my friends and they're like, all right, I'm home. I'm going to carve out all this time. I'm going to get all these things done and I'm going to, you know, get through, you know, months and months and months of a to-do list. And I've, I've kept saying to them, be really specific and really intentional about what you're trying to do. And remember that there's an acronym that's called SMART. And I think a lot of us know it, we've heard it, but now I think it's, it's so important so that you don't drive yourself crazy. And it's, your goal should really be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So really think about, especially for our law firm owners, what is going to get you the biggest bang for your buck if you do it now and for you what may be a downtime when we come out of this downtime will help you hit the ground running and i really think i mean i know i've sat down and i've really you know looked at what can i do that is specific measurable actionable realistic and timely and for me my issue is always what's measurable that's just my own personal Thing. Um, but, you know, wherever you are, wherever you've struggled in the past, whether it's been having, you know, 50,000 ideas and not being able to hone in, when you think about honing in, really take that one idea um, and make it and make it a smart idea. I think that will, you know, that will focus you when you are trying to get things done in your firm. It will keep you on track, um, you know, and it'll stop you from just you know, I have this habit of going from one sticky note to the next, um, you know, all these different projects, and it really focuses you in on getting one project done from start to finish. Um, and I think in this time when we are at home, so many people are homeschooling, you know, sort of off the cuff, and people are just stressed out a little bit, you know, or, you know, and they're feeling anxiety, just be kind to yourself and understand that you don't have to get through your entire to-do list that you've been saving for the last six months. You know, if you get through one or two really good things, um, you know, and you make it through those goals and they're smart, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, we'll all come out on the other side of this um, a lot better and a lot happier, I think. Awesome, Carol. Thank you for that. And uh, resonated with a lot of what you shared. And I'm going to jump on that when I give my tip at the end. Uh, Kristen, you're going to be up and... Um, Andy, you'll be next. Thank you. And I, I love that too, Carol. Give yourself some grace. I think that's really important right now. So my tip would be if maybe you've been, you know, going 200 miles an hour and this is forcing you to slow down a little bit, take advantage of slowing down a little bit to maybe try one tech tool that you've been curious about. Um, you, every legal tech company out there still has their team working remotely, can still give you a demo, can still get on the phone to answer questions. 
pretty much every company offers some sort of a free trial and most of them are doing even longer free trials now. So this is a great time to play around with some of those tools that you think might build some more efficiencies into your practice. Try them out, take advantage of these extended free trial offers, get on the phone or the chat with their teams who are still working remotely uh, to get your questions answered and just give it a try. So um, one of the big things that I would do right now is, and this is something that I think a lot of people uh, overlook, is set up a good system to follow up with leads and people that contact your firm or maybe even go to your website and don't, don't buy or don't hire you. Because you know, 93% of people are not in a position where they're ready to, to spend money right now. I actually, it's funny, when I was in college, I used to transfer VHS tapes to DVD. That was like my big thing that I used to pay my bills. Um, and when I first did it, I put out those like yard signs and it said, um, you know, transfer your VHS tapes to DVD and I put them on the side of the road and people would call me and I'd get tons of phone calls, like 30, 40 calls a day. And everybody's like, Oh my God, this is so great. I need, I need you to, uh, to do this. I've got a whole box at home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, add them up. I'm going to call you back and then we're going to meet up and we're going to do this. And then they would never call me back. I never, I didn't understand it, but for some reason I actually kept track of all their contact information. I actually had a, an Excel sheet that had their name, their phone number, and just some notes about it. So like two weeks later, I was like, what is going on here? So I actually started calling people. And one by one, they were like, oh my God, I've been looking for your phone number and I haven't been able to find it. Or I totally forgot, you know? So that weekend I made like $5,000 in one weekend. And as a broke college kid, I might as well have won the lottery. You know, it's crazy. Um, but what that taught me is that follow-up is the most important part of running a business. You know, most people, when they contact you, if they, if they find your firm, you know, through a Google search or through a Facebook ad or through a Google ad or however they find you, a lot of times, you know, so some people will buy, but then there's a lot of people that are not going to buy. And it doesn't mean that they'll never hire you. It just means that you need to kind of follow up with them a little bit. So, um, and that's actually one of the reasons that most people who, most lawyers kind of have started to know, to know my name is because I'm so relentless with my follow-up. Um, you know, I've got email systems in place. I've got ads that run. I've got all types of stuff. Like if you, if you ever hit any of my landing pages or anything, you're pretty much going to see me for the rest of your life. So, um, that's really one of the biggest things is really start to put together a really good follow-up system. Because when you have a follow-up system in place, basically, as soon as someone comes into your world, it just happens automatically. Like I don't do any of the stuff that I, I mean, I, I set it up one time and now it just runs automatically. So that's my tip. Um, and actually, if you guys want, I actually, I have a free book that I'm giving away. It's, um, it's my book. And basically, if you go to freebookforlawyers.com, it shows you the entire system. This is it right here. Uh, hopefully, it's okay to show this. But basically, it's, it's $7.95 to ship it and just send me a message and I'll refund your shipping. Um, so that, you know, you, I'll send you the book. I'll actually send you a copy of the book for free. The reason I have to charge the shipping is so that it generates the shipping label, but just message me and I'll refund your shipping. But it actually shows you the book walks you through the exact strategy that I use to do my remarketing and my follow-up. And it's, it's something that everybody should do. It's so easy. Awesome. Andy, I love that. And I, I'm going to talk more about that as well. Molly, you're up. Yeah, so yesterday I recorded a podcast that's going to go live on Tuesday that is titled, It Was Never About Time. And, um, you know, people have always procrastinated, put projects on the back burner uh, because they didn't have enough time. And our attorneys that are in our 66-day law firm turnaround, we have an entire process where we teach them how to build growth time into their practice. And I know attorneys are literal, so I would say step number one is that you build that growth time in your practice now. So next time we have some type of uh, shortfall, crisis, call it what you will, um, that you're already set up for having your power projects and your growth projects in place. So give yourself that grace of time. 90 minutes every Friday, I have my attorneys. It's dedicated where they shut down their business and it's whiteboard time. And it's taking a project from concept to completion in 30 days. And today I'm actually gonna be speaking in um, legal marketing flow right after this in regards to how I had a client um, develop an annual maintenance program in 30 days and get it from concept to deployment. So I can't say enough about giving you and your team that time to work on your power projects. Dedicated growth time every single week and chunking out one project at a time that's either going to enhance a current system, it's going, maybe it's a new concept that you want to deploy, 
Uh, and once you have you and your team walking out there and having a dedicated project manager that's going to hold everybody's feet to the fire and make certain that they can calendar that out, you will be amazed at what you can accomplish in a 90-minute think tank meeting and then everybody walking out with, on average, no more than two hours of homework a week to be able to keep the ball moving and get that project to a place of completion from systemization or additional revenue streams in your business. Awesome, Molly, love that. So uh, I just want to jump on the back here, the end of the bandwagon and share with you just a little bit of my thoughts. Um, when you, uh, try to tackle projects. One of the problems that we tend to have is that we have so many projects that we want to do that we try to do them all and we get nowhere with any of them. So we decide that it's not working and we just don't do anything and we just let life go on. Um, and we just allow our clients and our email and, and everything else to control where we're spending our time. The best thing that you can do is to limit the projects that you're working on from one to three projects in a quarter. And what I help my clients with and, and what I recommend that you do is you start to get really clear on what is it that needs to happen from now until 12 months from now in order for you to reach your goal 12 months from now. And then identify which are the things that are the most important. So I know that, um, uh, now I'm forgetting who said it, would pick the one that's gonna move the needle the most. Um, and uh, and you know, so that's how you identify which is the project you're gonna focus on and then really focus on that project for 90 days. Don't make it more than a quarter. Don't make it um, you know, five projects in a quarter. Take one project or two projects that you're able to really, really focus and hone in on for the quarter. And one of the things that I use is the 90X Action Journal. And I like their Action Planner, which is a mini version of their full size one. And this is it right here. And you can go to 90xgoalplanner.com uh, to, to purchase one. Uh, my friend alone, David, is the one who came out with it. But it's, it's, it's designed so that you have your daily three action steps. Try to get this into the, uh, let's see if I could zoom the camera in on it. So you have your daily three action steps right at the top. And then you've got your to-do list. So basically, if you, if you now identify what are the... Uh, what are the goals that, that what are the projects we're working on and now you hone in on what do I have to do this month to effectuate this project over the course of the next th three months what do I have to do this week to effectuate what I want to get done in a month and now what do I have to do every day to complete my action for this week you suddenly get a lot of clarity on what are the exact steps I need to take then when you start your day you start just doing those action steps do the project first, do those things first. And then this way you're done. You did what you needed to do. Now you can go and do the rest of the things that you need to do in your firm. And what's interesting is, is that people say, I don't have time for this, right? And what's gonna end up happening is, is you're going to start to realize that time is fooling you. And you really, like if you spend eight hours in the day trying to get something done, it'll happen in eight hours. If you only have four hours to do it, you're gonna get it done in four hours. So if you spend the first hour or two of your day getting these, these goal-oriented, uh, project-oriented tasks completed, and then only have six hours to do the rest of your work, you'll still complete your work. You're just going to complete it in six hours instead of eight hours. Um, it's, part, it's, it's a rule called Parkinson's Law, and Parkinson's Law dictates that uh, given a finite resource, our consumption of that resource is going to expand to consume the entire resource available. So it works both ways. Like if if you give yourself more time, you're going to take more time to do it. But if you give yourself less time, you'll get it done in less time. Why do we, why do we thrive on completing things last minute when we have a deadline? Because your time has run out. Um, the perfect example of this is a tube of toothpaste, right? So when you brush your teeth, you have a tube of toothpaste, you glob an entire thing of, of toothpaste across the, the brush, right? But when you get to the end of the roll, the end of the tube, you're like squeezing out a little Little tiny bit and putting that on the toothbrush and suddenly you're able to brush your teeth with that little bit of toothpaste it's the same thing that's what's happening with time and if we, the so sooner we recognize that the sooner that we can organize ourselves around it and take action on it so I think that really getting clear on what is the project that I want to work on and the way that you do that is look at okay what is the problem in my, in my business right now so my current problem right now is I don't have enough leads coming in 
Well, that's a marketing problem. So maybe my first project is a marketing related project. Now I have too many leads coming in and I can't get them, get them done quickly enough. Well, maybe I have a, a, a systemation or automation problem, or maybe I have a personnel problem. So now I need to create a project that's going to fix that problem. So you have to, you have to identify what is your current pain point what is your current thing that's causing you to not succeed and then work your projects around it so that you're not um, not having leads come through the door and instead you're spending time trying to implement a piece of software you know that's that's a mismatch of your problem versus the project you're choosing to work on so what I want to do now is I want to go to the audience for a QA. and a and uh, Dan uh, Clement has asked a question that I'm going to read out loud. I did not see whether he's willing to come on live or not. So Dan, if you are willing to come on live, um, please just post in the chat that you are willing to come on live and I'll promote you to a panelist and we can invite you in to the discussion. But Dan's question is as follows. This series of webinars has inspired me. I would like to Set up one to market my services beyond creating content, creating a sign up landing page, emailing the link, showing up. What other things do I need to do to be successful? So that is Dan's question. Um, and Dan is willing to come on live. So while I bring him on live, I'm going to allow the, the panelists to jump in um, to help Dan out with this question. Um, and it sounds like he's asking, okay, I know that I need to create a marketing system to drive people in but are, am I missing pieces in this project that are required for me to succeed? Can I ask Dan a question? Yeah, oh, on, right? I'm going to, I'm going to work on bringing him in unless somebody did that already. Yeah. Mimi took care of that. I'm just curious uh, what, what practice area he is. Yeah. So Dan, you can turn on your video and your mic and unmute yourself right now. And um, Andy's going to ask you some questions. I'm a divorce attorney. Divorce attorney. Okay, gotcha. So um, one thing that one thing that I would do is there's a strategy called the Dream 100 strategy, and basically, okay, there's, there's a couple of different ways. So first thing you can do is you can use your like if you're you're basically just talking about how can you get people on the webinar. Is that kind of what your question is? Not only that, but physically, am I missing any steps in yeah in creating in going forward? Okay, gotcha. So here's the thing. Um, and uh, we were talking about this, be I think before we even started that basically done is better than perfect, right? So all you need to do is go into zoom, create a webinar, grab mm -hmm. the link, right? The first thing I would do is I would go on your Facebook page, your personal Facebook page. And um, you say you do family law. So I would say I would I would do a post on your personal page. I say, hey, everybody, uh, I'm getting a lot of questions about child custody issues right now and child support issues. And how do we handle all these things now that you know, we're kind of in uncharted times. So um, I've been answering a lot of questions, but I have a lot of, I'm sure that the, there's a lot more people that have questions related to child support and family law and stuff like that, even domestic violence, things like that. So I'm doing a live Q and a, you know, tomorrow at 12 PM. Um, if you have any questions, come on, I'll answer all your legal questions for free. I'll give you advice and please share this with anybody that you think could, could benefit from this, you know, that, that needs to see this. So that's one way to fill it out. Another way to do it is to co-host, uh, webinars, um, and basically you figure out who are other businesses that you, that maybe, maybe they're competitors, maybe they're not competitors um, that you can work with that basically have access to people that are the same types of people that like that have access to your audience basically. Right. Yeah. So um, for example, I did a webinar um, on Monday with um, uh, uh, Nick from answering legal because answering legal has a very big list of lawyers that we can co-promote it together. Next week, I'm doing a webinar with uh, Michael from uh, Crisp Video because they've got a list of 50,000 lawyers. I've got a list of 20,000 lawyers. So there's a lot of benefit for him because he gets access to my list. There's a lot of benefit for me because I get access to, to his list. So that's one thing that you can really do is you can figure out what are the creative partnerships that you can form. So you're a divorce attorney. Maybe you can work with uh, a psychologist or a criminal defense attorney or, or someone like that that has a, another has access to more people. You two can co-host and either complement each other with your services. I mean, even like an accountant, you know, um, but use your personal list, use all that type of stuff. And just don't, don't frame it as like, we're going to be doing consultations. Just frame it as, you know, I know a lot of people have questions and we're just going to be on here answering all your questions. It's going to be casual. If you have questions, come on in and we'll see if we can help you out. That's, that's what I would do probably. And don't overthink it. Just schedule it, create a webinar and, and uh, you know, a webinar and then just share the link. That's, that's what I would do. 
Okay, thank you. I would agree with Andy. Don't overthink it. Um, don't even rewatch it. <laughs> Maybe have somebody else rewatch it. It's always painful to watch yourself. <laughs> and um, just get something out there right now. The, um, the cost per conversion has never been lower since 2014 right now in the digital space. I would put it on Facebook and LinkedIn is just absolutely blowing up right now. And it's a wonderful opportunity to capture potential clients in addition to potential power partners and referral sources. People are hungry for education and you really wanna get your message out there sooner than later. Uh, maybe have a couple of your colleagues or um, that there's a group called Legal Marketing Flow that everybody is sharing their webinars that they're posting and tips. And there's so many colleagues that would be willing to watch your webinar for you, give you tips, give you a copy of theirs so you can model it and um, just look at the key points to make sure that you hit. Okay. I, I have another it? tip also. Oh, sorry. Did you have a question? Did you say no, I was, something? Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll, okay. So one other thing I do is make sure you record it. And then when you're finished, send it to a video editor. And if you need a contact for a video editor who works really cheap, I can, I can give you a contact. Send it to a video editor, break every question and answer up into its own video, and then start sharing those videos. Because then you can, you'll end up with you know, 20 or 30 videos that you can put on your YouTube channel, that you can share on Facebook, all these different places that are actual questions that people asked. So you know it's something people are interested in. So you just take the question, the answer, you make it a video, and then you share that video. I do that all the time. That's how I, that's, a, that's one way that I generate a lot of content. And is Zoom the best forum to do this on? Yeah, I would use Zoom. Okay. Just make sure you have good lighting in front of you. Right. Not like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to, you might want to put the, the thing up, but yeah, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. Okay. So, um, well, um, no, I, I would, I'll add one more thing. Go ahead, Shauna. So, you know, when you're um, also, you know, after you're doing the interview is, you know, just as Andy had said about, you know, util reutilizing the content and, you know, there's so much going on, as you know, very well with child custody and divorce and family law with everything that's happened with these COVID-19 mandates. And so is to take the information from your webinar, create checklists, um, you know, that you can then send out to your clients, um, just like, you know, have you thought about this, um, you know, some actionable things that they can do and then think about and then, you know, and then sharing. So, you know, using that content in different ways and mediums. That's a really good idea. Turn it into like, a, like an FAQ or, or uh, frequently asked questions Q&A thing. Yes, absolutely. And also even customer stories. I mean, there's um, you know, there's, it doesn't have to be, you know, an actual, you know, customer uh, client testimonial. It can be more the theoretical, but, you know, you know, as is, you know, one of your, you know, clients right now, they've got a child who's, you know, just talk about the situation, which um, they are in, because that's oftentimes how, you know, we're all learning from each other in these circumstances that are happening right now. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll do, people retain information when it's told through story rather than like facts and figures. Yep. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And the only thing that I'd like to add, Dan, is that um, there, we cannot harp enough on the fact of the KISS method, right? Keep it simple, right? So Zoom is so, it's so simple that it almost feels too easy. You do have to sign up for their webinar package to create a webinar in Zoom, but that allows you to create a registration page. And it also allows Zoom to handle the emailing of a reminder and the replay to the audience. So uh, make sure that you go into the settings when you set up the webinar and turn that stuff on. You could customize what the email says so that people get reminded and they get emailed a reminder. And now you don't have to figure out how to remember, how to create an email platform and, and, and write emails and all of that stuff. Like that's all next level. Don't, I wouldn't even think about that. Like even you set a landing page, you don't need a landing page. Zoom creates the landing page for you. You put a topic, brief description, time of the, of the webinar, and boom, you've got a registration page. That's step one. Ultimately, you could get fancier, you can get more strategic with your marketing. But for right now, I think that the faster that you can put this together and the faster you can get it out there and start to, it, it, what's gonna happen is, is the first time you run this, you're, it's not gonna be attended as well as the next time. And you have to recognize that you're gonna put in all of this work 
and then you might only get 10 people on the webinar and you're going to feel defeated because of all the work you did. So the less work you put into it, the more you're, you're gonna feel good about the quantity of people on there and you're gonna keep going, which is really what's required to be successful in marketing is you have to stick with it and be consistent and just keep showing up. So that's the first thing is, is definitely keep it simple. Um, the second thing is, is recognize where your challenges are going to be. If you don't have a social following, then your first challenge is how am I filling the webinar? And Andy talked about some ideas of how you can do that. The next challenge is, okay, I ran the webinar. Now what? Make sure that you have a system after the webinar of how am I going to drive these people to become clients? What is my process of following up with people, of contacting them, of getting them to take the next step? after the webinar. So you got to get really clear on what, <laughs> get Andy's book, <laughs> get Andy's book. Um, but really what you need, you need to have a system of what steps you want them to take. If you're confused about what their next steps are, I guarantee you they're confused. If you're crystal clear on exactly what I want them to do at the end of the webinar, what I want to have happen, then they can start to get that clarity from you. So you really have to map that out before you before you do this is to know what is this what's happening after this webinar. Am I just putting this out to get people's contact information, or am I driving them to the next step? And what is that? And um, so those are the two things that I would put on either side of this. But the actual technicalities, which is what how you phrased your question, th that's the easy part, right? Keep that simple. Do it just just in Zoom. Don't add landing page software. Don't add email software. Not for your first go. And instead, focus on how you're going to fill it, and then what are you going to do with them afterwards. And that's my take on that. Uh, any questions, Dan, for us? So, if I if I have a little funnel set up, can I I can then use the names and addresses of the people that I have to put them through the funnel? Is that what you're suggesting? Sure. So if that if that's what makes sense for you, in other words, if if that's if the webinar topic makes sense for the next steps in that in that funnel, then yeah, you can just naturally send them to the next step. Once they're yeah, signing you, up for your webinar, essentially they're saying, "Hey, I'm interested in what you're doing." You can then send them more information afterwards. Yeah, you can download all the attendees in a CSV file. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So Dan, I'm going to move you over back into the attendee list and we're going to go to a question from Marriott Clardy. Uh, Marriott, are you willing to come on live? Uh, I see that you have two questions um, that were posted in there. We'll ask them both together. Just put it into the chat. You are. Okay. So while I bring Mary, Marriott on, um, oh, look at that. Thank you, Mimi. Um, Let's make you a co-host so that you can turn your video on. And I'm just going to let you ask your question instead of me reading it. How's that? Great. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I am a mental health service attorney. I provide one really specific service. I work with caregivers and individuals who have a mental health condition, and I really help them navigate through the treatment facility and I used my experience as an attorney with bipolar depression to do it. A lot of negotiation, advocacy, and um, education and training and support. One of the things, challenges that I have had when it comes to marketing is that my service is so niche and so unique, it is not a service that is normally offered by most attorneys. I've been um, using Andy's advice and doing a lot of Facebook Lives, YouTube Lives, but still not getting that traction that I need. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity to really look at what the holes are. So my question for you and for the panel is, if you are doing Facebook Lives, you are doing outreach, you don't have a list yet, what are some of the strategies that you can start, I guess, brainstorming to look for where are the holes, whether it's your practice area is thin or how to get the clients, et cetera? Can I ask a clarifying question before anybody starts to answer? Yes. Um, you say you don't have a list yet, but you've been doing um, Facebook Lives and YouTube Lives. So can you just explain to us why you don't have a list yet? Do you, are you, I, do you I don't have, have that a, set up? Or? 
Yeah, right now I've been just doing a lot of YouTube lives and then encouraging individuals if they want to reach out. I've been doing a lot of presentations and I have a very large, I have a single referral base that's been bringing in most of my clients, but the challenge currently is I don't have a list to nurture. So a lot of, if they, if they have the problem and they contact this referral source, it's a hotline, they can immediately get to me, but I haven't built a list of followers. So who's your ideal client? So my ideal client right now are individuals and caregivers. So individuals who have a mental health condition or caregivers who are taking care of that person. Mm. And they are currently either on their way to a treatment facility, in a treatment facility, or having challenges getting out of a okay. treatment facility. Okay, got it. So um, here's what I would do. What I would do is, do you have a problem spending a little bit of money on Facebook ads, like maybe 20, 30 bucks a day? No, nope, I can do that. Okay. So what I would do then is I would, I would go live on your business page yes. and what I, what I would do is I would basically put some sort of free guide out there in terms of like, um, like what's a big problem that your ideal clients are having right now? When they are in the facility, understanding not only their legal rights, but how to communicate okay. with the providers. Are they, do they, they are have access to, do they have access to like phones and everything? Like they're like, would they be on Facebook if they're in a facility? No. They have, okay. The caregivers so, would normally hire me. Okay, got it. So what is the caregiver, like what are the biggest fears that the, the biggest like problems and fears that the caregivers have right now? Lack of communication, lack of access and understanding the le really the legal rights. And many mm -hmm. of them are just panicked. Just so I understand, is this kind of like Baker there. Act type situation? Yes. Stuff? Okay, yes, got it. involuntary. Okay, so, so here, here's probably what I would do. I would create, a, I would go live on a Facebook page, right? And I would say anyone that has a loved one who's currently Baker Acted, under these current, in our current circumstances needs to know these five things because you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. give like, like a five or 10 minute video. That's like really, really good information, right? Like really solid information. Right. And then you run it as a Facebook live and in the actual Facebook post, make sure that the first line of the post starts with, um, you know, anyone who has a loved one who's been Baker acted needs to know these things. Right. Um, because you want the first line to really catch their attention. You, you don't want it to say in today's Facebook live attorney, uh, Mary at Clardy is going to talk about what happens if you're Baker. You're like, you don't want to do that. You want the first line to actually call them out. Right. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go into Facebook, uh, the Facebook audience or the Facebook ads manager on uh, on business.facebook.com and you're going to go into audiences. You're going to create a custom audience of anybody that watches 25% of that video. Right. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to run ads, basically do a, a loose targeting of kind of a, like a loose demographic of the type of people that you would be targeting. Right. Like, so if you're targeting anyone who's like, you know, maybe ages 35 to 55, who make over, you know, $45,000 a year and live in this area, right? Mm -hmm. So then you're going to record another video, another video that's going to have even more information, same type of thing, but more information. And then another video that's going to have even more information. So what you're going to do is you're going to run that ad, the first video to the wide audience. And then that second video, you're going to run that as an ad as well, but you're going to run it only to people that watch 25% of that first video. And the reason you're doing that is because if you have a video that's five to 10 minutes long and you're only target, you're only capturing people that watch 25% of that, like 25% of a five minute video is what a minute and 15 seconds or something like that's an eternity on Facebook. They're not going to watch that video if they're not interested in the subject, right? So you just keep doing that. You do that. And then you create a, an audience that watches 25% of the second video. So now you've got an audience that consists of people that watch two videos, at least 25% of a subject on a video that people would only care about if their loved one was going through this issue, right? And then from there, you can do another, then you can kind of follow up from there. You can say, hey, listen, if you have any questions, I'd love to hop on the phone, answer any questions that you have, provide value that way. That's how I would do it. That's, that's really the easiest way because it's, it's really difficult. To, like Facebook doesn't have a, have you been Baker Act section to target? You know what I mean? So what you've got to do is you've got to do this kind of like, it's called dog whistle marketing. It's basically, you're only speaking to people uh, that, and you're only getting the attention based on the people that, uh, would actually be interested in that subject. So I know that was really long, but that's how I would no. do it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Also, Maria, 
Um, don't forget about your offline resources. So you mentioned that <clears throat> your number one referral source is this hotline. Nurture them. Um, if they have a, a centralized call center, send them popcorn goodies or something not expensive, but make sure that you are always the number one top of mind resource for that call center. And maybe do your research and try to see if there's some other similar call centers that need you as a resource. My guess is there probably are, and they're, they would love to know about you and that you can help people in their time of need. So go do some research on the offline options too, since especially that's already your number one referral source. Yeah. Mary, are you also nurturing your referral sources? Like, like have you sort of tried to expand who your referral sources are? Yes, I've been doing a lot of offline presentations to estate planners, special needs planners, those that are that would not normally think that an attorney would do that, but maybe have clients that might need those services. So I yes, I have been doing a lot of just really a lot of offline public speaking presentations to more educate so that people know that these services are actually available for this population. And have you thought about doing any joint presentations? With, I have. I think you Most said, of the presentations planner. I have done have been as a guest. Okay. Because right. I, I think I think those would be really helpful because you're getting, I think Andy said it earlier, you're getting not only your regular audience, but you're getting their audience too. So it, it just opens you up to, to reaching out to more people. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Carol, I was going to say that as well. Um, you do have a list, as Moshe was kind of trying to point out. You have a list if you have to simply sign up for MailChimp, that's easy right now. If you don't have a CRM, I would highly recommend that and nurture the people, everybody that engages with you on Facebook or any platforms. Um, that's, that's a list. That's a potential new client. My recommendation is that you also um, A-B split test. Like Andy said, it's worth it to put some money behind it, even $5, $10 a day. That way you have analytics and you can see where the breakdown is. Is it in your ad or is it that in your landing page? Where are people stopping? Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to get some really great analytics. And I'm always preaching LinkedIn. I can tell you, I have a, a client that put a piece of content on um, a video on Facebook. It got three engagements with it, took the exact same copy two hours later and put it on LinkedIn. And had under, on just shy of 1,500 engagements with it. In addition to not only that, she got requested to do a power partner presentation with um, a potential strategic alliance and got an opportunity to write um, an article. So I can't say enough. You can go onto LinkedIn right now and they just launched, I think it was this week or last week, that you can become a broadcaster where you can go live on LinkedIn. The application process is super simple. I did mine yesterday, I already got approved. They just look at your profile, make sure your profile is pretty um, professional and that it looks like you can provide value. But LinkedIn is just a tremendous amount of referral sources waiting for someone like you to come to them and say, how can we work together? Thank you. I I'd like to piggyback. To oh, sorry, Shauna, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what everyone has said is amazing. I would, I have one thing to add, and that is, you know, to all these refer referral sources that you do have is following up with them and sharing specifically of what is relevant to the now so that you can share this is what you know your clients are experiencing because of the COVID-19 and these are some actional item or actionable things that um, can be done and so that you are you know being very top of mind and kind of ahead of it and you're educating and you're educating them. Awesome, Shauna, I love that as well. Um, I love, Kristen, Carol, Shauna um, have talked about your offline marketing. And I think that you need, to, you need to recognize that there's a lot of power in the old fashioned way, right, of marketing and, um, and be on the street with this guerrilla warfare and uh, align yourself with strategic partners, nurture those strategic partners, and really um, d dig into that because before you try something new, 
you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of what's already working. So I love what they shared. I also love that Andy went into um, a strategic way to make sure that your live efforts are going and hitting the right people. In other words, you could be going live and you're just not reaching the right people, which could be part of the problem. I wanna add something to that, and I think that there's a piece missing in your, in your online strategy, which might be part of the problem. So if you are already reaching the right people and they're not taking action, the reason that's happening is because you don't have a compelling enough reason for them to do so. So basically, you're just putting out there saying, hey, if you need more information, if you wanna talk about it, call me or send me an email, right? You're, you're asking them to contact you. That's not the most effective way to get somebody to take action. The most effective way to get somebody to take action is to offer them a solution to their problem. So think about why, what is, what is the biggest problem that these people have, come up with a solution, whether it's a, uh, a short video series, training series you do, whether it's a PDF download, whether it's a little ebook you write, something that you can give for free, it's called a lead magnet or a freebie or something like that, and in exchange for their name and email address, and if you really want, you can ask for more information like their phone number. I wouldn't go more than name, email, and phone number. Um, offer that for free on every single one of your live streams, the beginning, the middle, and the end. And that obviously needs to be tied to an email service provider, which could be MailChimp. It could be, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. I use Active Campaign. Um, and basically, that is going to get people to take action way faster than needing to schedule a call with you or get on the phone with you. And there you start to build a list of people. And now you've got a list that you can contact on the phone. You can send them emails. You can take the next action. So the first step is to figure out how to get them, convert them from a viewer to a, to a consumer um, of your content by actually getting fed, the, fed it directly. So now every time you go live, you're gonna send an email to your people saying, hey, I'm gonna be going live on this topic. And they start to get a better, closer affinity to you. It takes a minimum of eight to 12 touch points for somebody to be interested in doing business with you. So you gotta be able to get in front of them consistently over and over again. You have to have a system for that. Thank you. That's, those are great suggestions. So I'll start implementing them today. Awesome. Yeah, you do sound like an action taker. I do believe it. So Mariette, thank you for coming on live and for asking your questions. I appreciate it. We do have one more question we're going to address from Sue, uh, and then we're going, to, uh, we're going to shut this down. So uh, Mariette, we're going to move you over to back into the attendee section, and Sue will bring you on live in just a moment. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody this would not be possible uh, getting this great information doing these live streams would not be possible without our sponsors I want to run through our four sponsors again real quick and just remind you of the offers that they have uh, for you to uh, work with them uh, in some way and they're all all of the offers give you something uh, for free except for mine uh, all of the offers give you something for free that you can consume right now and this is a perfect example Mariette, of what I'm referring to, right? Mark Homer from GNGF, he's collecting your information by sending you this free book physically in the mail, Online Law Practice Strategies, How to Turn Clicks into Clients. I'm sure that once you put your information in and they send you this book, his sales team will follow up to try to see if you are somebody who would be willing to be a customer of theirs. Um, there's no, there, there's no cost to doing that for you. You get a free book out of it and you can always decline the next step but that's how they gather your information so they could take the next step with you. Um, so that's uh, gngf.com forward slash free dash book. Then Smith AI. Smith AI is your go-to virtual reception service. They're offering $290 worth of extra stuff for free if you try them out today, which turns into essentially the first two months free on their platform, which means that you can give them, give the service an actual try, not pay anything and see if you like it. And if it works for you, and if you're getting value out of it, and then you can always choose to cancel if you're not getting value out of it. So you want to go to smith.ai and use code SmithCOVID19. They're going to get you set up with a, with a AI chatbot on your website at no charge. And they are also going to give you the, a free month of the starter plan with an additional 20 calls for free. Um, Ali Katz from New Law Business Model. Instead of asking you to send your email address information to her, she is inviting people into a free Facebook group, which is a place where she can uh, create events 
that she can invite you to. She can create posts. She can do videos in there where you'll, you'll get notified because you're in the group. So another great example of giving somebody a next step. Uh, but anyway, if you're an attorney who wants to add estate planning to your practice or you already are doing estate planning and you want to get three to $5,000 uh, uh, per estate plan, and you also uh, might be interested in getting business owner clients at 750 to three thousand dollars recurring revenue a month then you definitely want to check out their free facebook group which is lifestyle lawyers club join it in there and start to get access to this great information uh, and then profit with law here at, at the law firm growth summit brand uh, we created the law firm growth incubator uh, the law firm growth incubator is a support tool for small law firms who are looking to get support in their marketing their tech and their business operations. Uh, you're wearing many hats, don't do it alone. Uh, I can't stress enough the, the value of having guidance and, and coaching. Uh, and we are running a call every single week to help guide you on what you need to be doing in your firm. And you can get in there for just 27 bucks a month right now. The price will be going up on Monday and that's profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator and finally if you're watching this on facebook and you're not registered for these live events we do have uh what's today uh wednesday um so or is it thursday i'm confused about what day of the week it is so we have one more event today's thursday tomorrow's friday we have one more event coming up and that's staying healthy and performing self-care staying healthy and performing self-care if you, and and i love that we save this one for the end of this two-week marathon because at this point, I mean, I'm feeling burnt out of being at home with the kids here every day, cabin fever, and, and just really at the end of my rope. And I can't wait for this conversation tomorrow about staying healthy and performing self-care because I've been doing a really poor job at it. And I'm sure that a lot of you are experiencing the same thing. So definitely go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID, profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID and join us there. Uh, so, Sue, I'm going to allow you to turn your video on if you would like, um, and you can unmute yourself, and I'd love it if you can ask us your question. Thank you. I think most of it has been really answered in previous questions, even though my question was different. But this is my second career. Most of my clients now are court appointed. And that, of course, that, you know, is not a lot. But I'm also licensed in another state. So how can I use this time to actually get clients, uh, paying clients from another state? And the thing is, I have in the last week, I say, thank you for doing this. I have made videos. Not one has been posted because as someone said before, when you watch yourself, you just, I'm just like, no, I'm not putting that out there. So how do I use this time to, I guess, reach out of state potential clients? It's a great question. Anybody uh, on any of my panelists who are remaining want to want to jump in? Definitely have, yes. have some stuff for you as well. But go ahead, Carol. Sue, I actually run a national practice. I'm, I'm an immigration attorney, so my clients are all over the country. Um, what what sort of contacts, what sort of offline contacts, maybe referral partners do you have in other in, in, in the other state which you're barred? Are you reaching out to them? Do they know that you're actively taking cases? And is, are you taking cases in the same area of law? Is it a different area of law? Same area of law. The law, the, the practice is pretty much probate, but it's not wills and estate planning. It's mostly conservatorships, guardianships. A lot mm -hmm. of my clients are special needs. I do some family law, but I don't really like family law, but I'll, yeah. I'll do family law if I have to. But most of my contacts out of state, that's where I was born. It's my hometown. It's the surrounding areas. Everyone knows me. They know my family. You know, all my family is still there. So they are reaching out for free, you know, for free answers, but I want to let them know, hey, I am here. I can do a lot of things virtually that before this crisis, I didn't realize I could do. So I'm here to service you. How do I turn that into business? Um, I would, if I were you, I would set up call, call people, ask them how they're doing, make the calls all about them. There is something that every single one of them will need, whether it's a plumber, a handyman, an attorney, whatever, like they will need something. If you put yourself in front of them and make make yourself their go-to person for all of those things, 
they will then come back to you when someone that they know needs your services or they themselves need your service. Um, I also think, even though you don't like to do it, video will get you in front of many, many people more so than a phone call will. And you can be genuine in a video, right? Um, and I, I will kindly and gently say, get over the fact that you don't like how you look on video or how you sound and worrying about the background. People want information. They don't care what your hair looks like. They don't care about the glare in your glasses. They don't, they just don't care. You know what? That's people... it. It was the glare in the glasses. See? See? And then and yesterday see, exactly. on the phone, someone told me they, they, were, they didn't even see me, but they said, Oh my God, you sound like Dolly Parton. And I'm like, I don't have an accent. And everybody else says, Oh yeah, 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 you do. But are you giving them value? Are you giving them information that they're craving? Because if people were staying on long enough to make comments, then they were listening to you. So they were taking in the information and the value that you are giving them. So listen, I don't ever rewatch a video of myself, ever. I think I sound crazy. I think I look crazy, but you know what? Who cares? Who cares, right? I don't, I don't ever wear makeup. I, I don't have time. I don't have, like, who cares? People are most concerned about the information that you are providing to them because they want to hear it. So that's all in our heads that we don't look good. We, you know, we don't have on the right blouse. We don't have the right jewelry. Forget all about that. Focus on the information that you have. Release the videos that you've already done. And I guarantee you, once you start doing these videos over and over and over again, one, you won't care what you look and or sound like. You won't care that you stumble over a few words. Just hit post. And if, as long as you're consistent, and you start telling people, hey, I'm online. Hey, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. Hey, I'm going to be out there Friday at 12. Hey, I'm going to be out there Sunday at noon. Hey, do you need a break from your kids at home right now? Go lock yourself in the bathroom for 10 minutes and get on this live with me, right? Lock everybody out. Hey, <laughs> have you hidden all the good snacks in the bathroom? Go to the bathroom and for the next 15 minutes, munch on your snacks and listen to me. People will tune in. It may take some time, but as long as you're consistent and you're adding value to them, your client base will expand. Because um, I started my office in, in Atlanta and now I'm in Florida. And so my client base has expanded. So I, you know, but also think about the people that you know um, in, in the other state where you're licensed and reach out to them, send them an email, you know, send them an e-card and say, hey, guess what? Maybe you didn't know this, but I'm, you know, but even though I'm out of state, I can still help you. I can still be a valuable resource. So just part of it is just letting people know that you can be a valuable resource to them. Thank you. Anybody else want to jump in? Well, to mimic what Carol said, just lean in and post. <laughs> Okay. I mean, just talking to you now, like you're engaging, you're informed, and you have something to offer that can help people. So you, I think you just, you know, overcome that and just do it. So let me ask one last question, and then I know we all have to go. My practice area, that's what I want to bring people in for, but most of people know me from my previous career and my previous knowledge, you know, knowledge. Do I provide that information to them to let them know, you know, do I expand that to kind of rely back on what I did? What is your previous knowledge or career? I was in insurance for 30, 33 years. Okay. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to jump back to this question in just a moment. I just want to put a bow on, on, on the last thing. Um, the best way to produce video and not worry about looking at it after is to do live video. First of okay. all, when you do live video, people are not expecting a, 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 a polished um, production. They're expecting you to be real and live and in the moment. And you don't even need to be sitting at that desk. First of all, guys, put in the comments, there's, there's still some attendees here, put in the comments a one if you think that Sue um, came across 
professional, looks amazing with the background behind her. If you think that she looks great on video, just put a one in the chat. Um, and I'm gonna ask our, our panelists, raise your hand if you think that she looks great. I think you look great. Okay, maybe <laughs> use a ring light in front of you. Go on Amazon, buy a ring light, stick it in front of you, give a little bit of more light to your face. But other than that, you look wonderful. You came across great. Like I, I would not, I would not have a problem with that at all. But people want, they want real stuff. Like go live on your phone when you're outside taking a walk and talk about a topic. You know, it doesn't need to be this polished and professional look that you're giving when you're doing live. And that's a great way to just practice your video skills and, and start talking about your message. And also understand that you can repeat yourself. You can go live every day and talk about the same topic, just put a different spin on it. Um, some people are coming back and watching each of them, but often you're reaching new people each time. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I talked about this three times already. It's not a problem. Just keep talking about the things that are important, the things that people need to hear, because there's always new people being exposed to you. There's always new, um, new you know, and even people who heard it already, they need to hear it again. They need to hear it again. So um, I definitely would just switch to live video for now um, <laughs> to get good at it and to, and to not have to be in your head about it. Like, okay, it's, I'm you. doing it live. It's, it's going out to the world, whether I like it or not. Um, and if that makes you nervous the first time, you can actually broadcast to your, to your profile that only you can see it. Okay. So you can actually do a live broadcast just to feel what it's like to broadcast live without putting it out to the world, but only do that once just to, just to get what it feels like, how long it takes to go live. And, and, you know, and, and it, you don't even have to watch it. It's just to go through the motions so that you're comfortable and then boom, that's it. Just start broadcasting. Um, the other thing is, is that you need people in your area to be able to see it. And if you're connected to all these people from the insurance world and you're not connected with the right people for your practice area, then you need to start to find places where people can learn about you. Um, and we talked in another live stream about the profile funnel. I, I, I don't know if you were there or not, but really beef up your profile on socials so that when somebody says, Hey, I like what this person is saying and they click on you to check you out on there, there's the next step of what they should do to follow you, to go to your business page, to download a free something um, so that they know how to, how, to, how to connect more with you, but then get active in, in, in Facebook groups. So go into groups that are specific in the area that you're in and start to provide value there, answer people's questions, um, create your own posts with informational content that's not um, marketing, but it's just information that you're sharing. Uh, you can even, if you're doing a live broadcast that's relevant to a Facebook group, you can say, hey, I'm doing a live broadcast tomorrow on this and this topic. If you're interested, just, just comment below and I'll, and I'll message you the link, you know, something like that. Yeah. So just start to get creative about how do I find the people, but you have to start going live every day. Um, and I just want to turn it around to your other question about, um, you know, your, your contacts. Uh, panelists, do we have anything to, to share with, with Sue regarding... Um, her previous career. Uh, I'm a career changer myself, so I totally resonate with the question, and uh, I've, I've got some opinions too, but I want to ask them first. I don't think there's any harm in sharing your story. It just, it's, it's, it's who you are, it's your life experience, it's, um, you know, it gives you what um, makes you unique, and so I think that that is um, fine and, and also maybe share the why, you know, like you were doing something and, and then you pivoted and you had this, you know, a whole second career, you know, share the, you know, what prompted that, you know, the why, like get, get real authentic and um, because that's what we all connect with at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. You're very Thank welcome. You. And Sue, I'm just gonna add to what Shauna said, um, that don't discount who, what your previous contacts know, like who they know, right? So you're not, you don't need to market to the insurance industry. You don't need to go, you know, pursue them, but they are connected with you on social. They're connected with you, you know, in, in other ways. Don't be afraid to share stuff on social because you're bothering the people in the insurance industry. They're going to learn very quickly. This is what you do. And then if they have somebody that 
that needs to hear that, they're going to share your stuff out. They're your, they are your, your previous contacts that, you know, they care about, about you and what you do. So they might be people who are bringing in the audience for you. Uh, so I wouldn't, I, you know, Shawna had some, some great stuff about, you know, owning your story and, and getting in front of it and talking about it. But I, I also don't want you to hide, um, you know, from those people because, oh, that I'm not targeting them. Yeah, you're not targeting them specifically, but there's definitely value in your stuff being seen by anybody who knows who you are because people are connected to people. I mean, if you look on LinkedIn, look at how many people you have second connections with, you know, and as your network grows, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, there's hundreds of thousands of people I have a second connection with, which is mind boggling. That means that I'm directly connected with somebody who could probably introduce me to, you know, so many people, you know, on, on the planet and so many important people that I want to get to know and knowing, you know, just knowing that is, is helpful in, in just empowering yourself to get out there and put your stuff out there. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. You are very, very welcome. And I'm turning uh, this camera off. <laughs> Go for it. Um, panelists, thank you so much for sticking it through. We went a little bit over and attendees, uh, you as well. Uh, I appreciate you being here and I hope that you're getting value from this. Remember tomorrow we have staying healthy and performing self care 1 PM Eastern. And I'm really, really excited about this topic. I shared with you why before, but I'm excited because we're bringing on, um, except for Ali Katz, who's been on a number of these live streams from New Law Business Model, the other four panelists are people who have nothing to do with the legal industry. They are experts in their field. Uh, Beverly Simpson is a uh, health and wellness and fitness coach. Uh, Madison Elizabeth, the same. Amber Brzezicki, she teaches people how to use macros to be healthy um, and, um, and really all, works all around mindset with that. Miguel Franco is a race car driver and, and, um, and does a lot of work on uh, focusing your mind and being able to hone in on, uh, on taking care of yourself so that you can operate a peak performance. So I'm really excited about this pa panel of lineup, uh, this lineup of panelists, because it's different than what we've had so far. So uh, definitely come and join us tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to seeing you then. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, attendees. And um, I'm really, really excited uh, about everything that we've done so far. It's been, it's been very impactful for me and, and hopefully for you as well. So stay safe and have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Mosha. You're welcome. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.